Good morning, everybody. A special Saturday morning edition. And uh, I know a lot of you are very concerned about the stock market. And as you know, crypto is a huge thing right now. It's a transformational time. But I'm in the situation I'm in because of the stock market. And it's working. Whoops. Sorry for that little repeat. Anyway, happy Saturday morning. I normally try and take Saturdays off, but so many people were asking so many questions about where we are on the stock market. I decided, you know what? I'm going to give my perspective and I'll let you guys know exactly how I prepare. And I know everybody has some stock market exposure. A lot of people are all in on crypto, but most of you have stock market exposure in one way or the other. So let's go in. Um, got my morning coffee and we have a special guest as well. I hope you guys can see. <laughs> so my symbolism is back. Many of you missed it. Uh, so here we are. State of the Union stock market. Let's jump in. I got my little clicker too. Math, money, and freedom. A little bit of math today. Not too much, but some basic ratios that you can use to prepare. And quick disclaimer, this is edutainment. So first of all, we are seeing not only a huge amount of fear in the crypto market. I mean, if you look, I think I analyzed something like 80, 85% of all YouTubers are bearish right now uh, that follow crypto, which I think is astounding. Uh, somebody said to me the other day, it was very funny. It's like, you know, you're the most conservative guy ever, but you're still now bullish more than anybody else. So all the moon boys went bearish and I'm just consistently, you know, my way. So anyway, fear and the stock market is kind of the topic for today. Now let's talk a little bit about exactly what's going on. So here is a couple of fellows. Hey, Green Tea, welcome in India. It's It makes me so happy to see people from all over the world. We've got Chile, UK, India, etc. So let's talk about the stock market, bubble crash coming, everything you open, everything you read, everything you see, it's all about bears predicting an epic market crash. And remember, we only had one 15 months ago. And we got Bangkok, Thailand as well. It's crazy. So let's start with Michael Burry. And he is the guy, he's kind of what I call a perma bear. He's always kind of negative, always shorting stuff. Sometimes he's good. He shorted Tesla the same time I shorted at 850. And he did predict the big real estate crash, which was great. And therefore, he is a bit of a legend. But he forecasts the greatest speculative bubble of all time. And he's been talking about this now for seven months. And he tweets and then he deletes them and etc. So that's his take. And then we have a guy called Gundlach. And he says, we are in a fully fledged epic bubble. And he also said the dollar is doomed over the long term. So again, this guy is right. But predicting a bubble is kind of easy. I mean, just look at the meme stocks of AMC and GameStop and stuff like that. You can see that pretty easily. Now, Stanley Druckenmiller, a lot of respect for him. He said, I have no doubt that we are in a raging mania in all assets. But that doesn't stop him from investing. He's still in the market. So remember, that's the important thing to remember here is, yep, it's crazy. But hey, if you're not in, you can't win, as they say. And then we have this guy called Anatole Kaletsky. This is a killer wave in the NASDAQ bubble. Again, he doesn't really believe in disruption and technology stocks. He says many technology stocks fundamentally overvalued. The meme stocks, I agree with that. Green meme stocks are absolutely crazy. Cryptocurrencies and the COVID winners will prove worthless. I disagree with Anatoly. The COVID winners, look at the Zooms of the world and everybody, Amazons. <laughs> They're just going from strength to strength, especially now with C19 and the Lambda and Delta variants. Um, everybody knows that this stuff is not going away and we could have more lockdowns in the future. But anyway, not trying to alarm anybody, just being very, very realistic here as well. But let's go a little bit further. Let's look at some numbers and where we came from. So what I did was I pulled out all the numbers of the US equity market value pretty much over the last 20 years and that the total US stock market, I didn't do it for other markets around the world, but I did it for the US stock market and I pulled out the S&P 500. And this told me a couple of interesting things. Number one, we've gone from $10 trillion in a stock market value up to nearly $50 trillion in 20 years. So that's a 5X, that is pretty astounding. And again, if you were not in the stock market over the last 20 years, you missed out the opportunity to 5X your money. Now, if you pull out the S&P 500 from the stock market and just examine the S&P 500 alone, you will see that little blue line there 
is representative of all the growth. The delta between the S&P 500 and the rest of the market has been pretty constant. Now, what does that mean? Let me zoom out for a second. What that means is the whole stock market is being carried by the top 500 stocks. And the S&P 500 continually rebalances itself. It kills the losers and adds in the winners, like brings on Tesla and Regeneron and other companies that are doing really well. Regeneron makes vaccines for guess what? Yes, you named it. So basically what this tells me is the if you're not in the top 500 stocks, if you're in all the crumbs, all the other garbage, your returns aren't really going anywhere. And that's the lesson. And that's why it's very important to pick the right stocks and be on the right trains at the right time. Do not just hold a basket of everything. It's one of the reasons I don't own mutual funds or ETFs because you know the weak ones will always drag them back. But let's go a little bit further and let's analyze exactly what happened during C19. So the C19 crash. Hey, Slovenia, <laughs> New York City, Cape Town, South Africa. This is, it makes me so happy to see people from all over the world looking for financial freedom. And that is brilliant. So big thumbs up to everybody out there all over the place. So the C19 crash happened in seven trading days. The stock market fell 35.74% and it wicked back in about 40 trading days. So that was truly a V-shaped recovery and it didn't look back after that. It just bounced incredibly quickly. So the point I'm trying to make here is corrections happen fast if they do happen. Now let's look at the recovery. So it took 144 four days for a 55% rebound. But the key thing to look here in at the numbers is the stock market fell 35.74%. But back to the rebound level, it was a 55% gain. So the, the thing here is, if you held and didn't sell anything or you weren't prepared for this crash, you would have lost 35.74% of your portfolio, but then you would have gained 55% back. Now, what happens if you were in a position to be in cash and buy the dip then your gains are exponential rather than having no gain. And you can see a 35% down equals 55% back up. So if you have 100 bucks and you lose 35%, it's not too bad. You go down to $65. But if you invest $100 at the bottom, it goes to $155. And that's kind of the simple math number I want you all to get away from this as well. And I know a lot of people say you can't time the market, but I time the market and people in Patreon see it every day. I pick tops and I pick bottoms and I nail them every single time. Well, 80% of the time, 90% of the time I do. So let's look at the C19 recovery today. 476 days we are in and it's gone. The market has gone up over 100%. So just think about that, everybody. That is huge. Again, those people who were very conservative and left the stock market, it got rattled out missed that train and timing is very, very important. But let's look at more numbers, especially for those people that haven't been playing. Yeah, nice Ethereum. Well, well spotted there. Uh, everybody's, you're, I think, the second person Jeffrey Aldas to recognize the pattern we're trying to replicate here. So when we look at the crash history of the world, for those of you who are too young to remember all the stuff that went down, this is really, really important. So zooming out, going back to, you know, 100 years or whatever, 50 years, this is this takes into account, I think, the last 70 years. You can see the green is the stock market going up and the red is the stock market going down. So anybody can see, OK, red going down. Yep, it is both shorter in duration and also less steep. So the question is, if you are a perma bear, someone who always shorts the markets, are you going to do well? The answer is no. But of course, let's break this down a little bit further. Uh, I created a, another spreadsheet to try and explain the importance of this and where we are with the market. So bear markets, 1956, 1961, 1966, 1968, 1973, 1980, 87, 2000, 2008, 2020. I know a lot of you weren't around for some of those, and some people probably aren't even aware of what bear markets are. But the point here is the average duration of a bear market is 12.7 months, going back 70 years. The average dip is 35.57%, which is almost identical to the C19 dip we had in March 2020, which is uncanny. And 
the total number of years over the past 70 years we've had in a bear market is 10 years. Okay, so that is the bear situation. And when you hear people talking about, oh, big bear market coming, yeah, it could come, but it'll be a worst case scenario, 35% dip, and it'll only last a year. In fact, it'll probably last a lot, yes, a lot less. And when we look at the bull markets, 1957, 62, 67, 67, 69, 75, 82, 87, 2001, 2009, and we're in one right now, the returns are outrageous. So the average duration of a bull market is five and a half years or 66 months. The average growth during that bull market is 169%. And the number of years we've had over the past 60 years in the bull market is 50 years. So the question is, do you want to be missing those bull markets because of the crazy returns? Okay, so let's talk briefly about signs of a bubble. Now, these are some of the common things that I've seen happen. I saw it, I went uh, back in 1999, 2000, I saw lots of tech valuations that were insane and I became very bearish and I started to short stocks like EMC back in the day early when nobody else was doing that. Michael Burry wasn't even around then because I've been doing this longer than he has. But signs of a bubble, number one, everybody's piling in. What I mean by that is, you know, people going to bars and restaurants and waiters and Uber drivers talking about, oh, I'm buying GameStop, etc. Red flag. Second one, unsustainable valuations. Look at AMC or GameStop. Classic case in point. Craziness. Meme stocks, again, and other assets like Doge are just going parabolic. Debt extensions. This is the amount of debt being taken on to fund a lot of this growth. And prices rise regardless of news. Like no matter how bad the news is for a stock, they continue to go up. Now we're not seeing a lot of that, but we're seeing that in some isolated cases. And then the other classic one is new investors come in and say old investors don't get it. So you're seeing a lot of new investors in the market now investing in things like uh, GameStop and AMC and Dogecoin and saying, hey, this is a different world. You know, the old, the old farts really don't know what's going on. So that's kind of the science. So let's see now, are we going to crash? Let's kind of get to the conclusion here. As you guys know, I always do a conclusion and tell you exactly what I'm thinking. Unlike other people that don't make conclusions, you'll always get a conclusion in my videos. So first of all, this is kind of a representation of the devil and the angel. The devil represents um, kind of bearish sentiment. So yes, valuations are high. Yes, we're going into a month that is typically the worst, which is August, is slow because everybody's on vacation. Uh, sadly, number three, C-19 is on the rise again and lockdowns are beginning to happen all over the world. I heard Malaysia, Vietnam, parts of Canada, parts of California now are putting new mandates in place and they're beginning to think about closing gyms again. That's bad. Inflation is definitely on the rise, which is not a good thing. And bond yields are rising, which is also not a good thing. Now, on the positive note, on the angel side, the blue, but disruption is in play. If you look at the stuff that the Teslas of the world are doing and some of the biotech companies, it is crazy. And probably the second point, most important point, is the system is flush with cash. There is just so much money out there and the Fed keeps on printing and the European Central Bank keeps on printing and everybody keeps on printing money. Money is debasing like crazy, which means that the stock market has to go up no matter what. So if you have money, dollars debasing by 15%, that means hard assets like stock and real estate, etc., at a minimum, just to say flat, have to go up by 15%. So you can expect a 15% return in the stock market no matter what when the money is debasing. Now, 0% interest rates, of course, is positive, which means people can still borrow. A lot of people are borrowing like crazy. And investors are forced to invest. And what I mean by that is, well, because there is 0% return on capital, you have entities, businesses right now looking to do things like stake, looking to buy stable coins and generate return because they're so desperate to get return on any money they have. And you look at the Apples and the Googles, they're sitting on tens and hundreds of billions of dollars in cash. They don't know where to put it. Where are they going to put it? They, they think tech stocks are too expensive to acquire any companies. So they're stuck. So and then supply is scarce, real estate, Bitcoin, etc. So these are kind of the positives that I see. And uh, first of all, an old rule of the market, time in the market beats time in the market. Yes, it's always good to be in the market than not in the market. That's the rule of time. So if you cannot time the market, 
it's always good to be in the market. Now, what do I recommend in terms of how I'm playing this game? So first of all, some stocks are definitely in a bubble. Others are not. So bubble crazy valuations for some, it's not hard to spot them. But others, I think, even though they're highly valued, they are still good value, like Tesla. Uh, don't get caught up in the euphoria. You know, don't get sucked into things and that are overhyped. And prepare. And what I mean by prepare is buckle in and be ready for a dip if it happens. And offload the risky topped out plays. For example, last week, I offloaded my Apple, which I was planning to do for a long time. I got rid of a big chunk of my PayPal. And I'm starting to shed a lot of other assets. And I am increasing cash. I'm about, thanks God be, appreciate your donation. Uh, I'm increasing cash every step of the way. And I'm hedging my long in the money positions, call options by selling out of the money call options. Also, I've got no emotion. I don't care either way, but I'm prepared either way. And have your finger on the trigger. So again, what I'm doing, I'm about 22%, 23% cash right now. And a lot of my existing positions are hedged. So I am looking for a dip. Now, I don't believe there's going to be a crash, which is 20% or more. I think we could have a weakness that could go 8 to 10% dip in the stock market in August. And that's where I think things go. And then September, because there's so much money out there, things will go back up again. So that's my uh, crystal ball view of the world. Let's open it up to Q&A. And a big thank you to everybody be here on a Saturday. And let me know if you like the time of this new time slot. I'm thinking, you know, I always try to take Saturdays off, but there's so much stuff to share with you all that, you know, we'll see. So, hey, Wen Lambo. <laughs> yeah, uh, part-time San Francisco, part-time elsewhere too. High desert. In fact, uh, today I am in Tahoe. So sell the rip by the dip. Exactly. Now, first of all, let me see if I missed any super cool questions. Um, I'll start from the bottom. And da, 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 da. what is the best ticker for S&P 500? That is SPX from Caligula. Use SPX. And what would be the top three stocks to put in a Roth IRA today? Ah, interesting question. Good one. I would definitely think about um, <laughs> my usual suspects, Tesla, MicroStrategy, something safe like Invite. That would be great in 2022 and beyond. Um, I also own a lot of Shopify, Google, Square, the solid kind of recession-proof names that will just continue to print money going forward. Again, um, they're kind of the, the names I like. And I shed the ones that I think are kind of past it. So you don't see me owning things like Oracle or Microsoft or Salesforce or those types of names. But truly, the the true leaders in the space that are molding where the world is going over the next 10 years. That's where I like to be. So Robin Thomas, this time, please. Uh, this time, I don't understand. I hope that's another question. And Jason, thank you so much. I got a poop emoji. I don't know if that's good or bad. Um, let me see. Why all the traveling? Uh, I move around a lot. I, not really. I just, uh, it's a long story as to why. Do you have a teaching course on how to time the market from Galaxy Sector? Great question. So I do share uh, on Patreon, kind of every time I invest, I do a trade alert. I share my investment thesis, what I saw. A lot of it is based on things like TA and other stuff that's kind of happening in the marketplace, um, as well as momentum, relative valuations, money flows, macro, a whole bunch of stuff. Ryan Promer. The opposite is true. When price goes down, regardless of news, it's a bottom. Feels like the crypto market. Yes, Ryan. Great, great question. In fact, I'm seeing something very, very positive. So I spent a lot of time nearly 30 years ago uh, managing things like Forex risk. And one of the things that I always try to identify is correlation or lack of correlation in different markets. So right now, we have the S&P 500 at an all-time high. And we have Bitcoin 50% off the all-time high, more than 50%, in fact, 53% by my calculations. And that is a great thing because that means we can start trading one off the other. And I have this weird theory, and this is maybe only 15, 20% chance that I'm right, but I think if there is weakness in the stock market or the stock market does crash, I think there will be a flight to safety. 
And that safety will be things called uncorrelated assets. That means things like real estate, maybe dividend paying stocks, maybe gold and Bitcoin. So um, that's, that's where I think things could go. Uh, so Ryan, great question. And I'm excited for that time when we're already seeing the complete unbuckling of crypto from the world and the adoption of DeFi. You know, at one stage over the next one to five years, I guarantee you, we're going to see traditional financial services company stocks go like this, which will be prime short candidates. And we're going to see DeFi tokens go like this. So watch for that X. I don't know when it's going to happen. I don't know if it's going to be a month from now or a year from now or three years from now, but it's going to happen and it's going to be fun to watch. And we will be ready with our fingers and the triggers. So thank you, Ryan, for the question. Uh, work hard. Thoughts on MicroStrategy? Yeah, I shorted MicroStrategy. Um, I shorted when it hit 688. I sold out of the money calls and I bought half of them back on Thursday. And I'm looking to close out the rest of the position early next week. It hasn't quite bottomed. So sometimes when I'm not sure that the bottom is in, I cover half because I was at a 53% profit already on the shorts. So basically, I think I sold for every contract. I got about $11,100 and I bought them back at about $5,200, $5,300. For every contract I sold, I was making uh, nearly 6000 or more than 6000 So that's how I play that on MicroStrategy. Looks like we have lots of spammers out there. So big thank you to the moderators. Um, I appreciate that for being there. We have K8 in the house. So Siddhartha Chatterjee, do you prefer ETFs of the S&P 500 or the NASDAQ 100? Great question. So back in the 90s, I used to hedge my tech portfolio by putting together uh, option stru structures against the QQQ, which was the NASDAQ 100 index. But right now, what I prefer to do, because when, it, when, when you are painting with such a broad brush, buying you know indexes or ETFs, the S&P 500 NASDAQ, half of it or 60% of it's garbage. So I much prefer surgically choosing stocks and having, right now I have about 20 names in my stable, which is too much, but I'm beginning to shed them. So I'm ditching things like uh, Apple and, Next Era Energy, uh, PayPal, starting to cull some of those positions. But I'm, again, as I mentioned before, I'm still holding my big ones. I don't do ETFs. I don't do mutual funds. But what I do do is I look at the best ETFs, like the ARK K ETF, and they have 60 holdings. And I will identify the top five and go after them and, and vet what they do. So for example, uh, Shopify. I've been a big Shopify player. got in hard in March of last year. I've been selling puts and buying long-term calls in Shopify for a long time. And it's also, I think it makes up 12 or 13% of Kathy Woods' position in her fund. And I didn't realize that till after the fact. So that's a very bullish sign. So Siddhartha, thank you so much. Phil H., would you buy 15K of MicroStrategy in a retirement account at 525? Yeah, I like MicroStrategy under the 530 mark and not investment advice. But I think it's a very, very good long-term hold as long as you can be patient because we don't know when, my, when Bitcoin's going to rebound. It might take another one month, two months, three months, but it's going to rebound. That is certainty. And once it does, MicroStrategy will too. So again, um, I, I shorted MicroStrategy at 688. I covered exactly at, I think it was 530, 525 on Thursday, whatever it was, I picked the dip of the day. So basically me covering my short is like me going long. So Phil, great question. Uh, Hiroshi, and I can't tell you what to do, but I can share what I do. Hiroshi Sakakibara. Hope I got that right. Hey, a question on Bitcoin. Isn't switching from fiat to Bitcoin simply means we switch our trust from government to the rich 1%? Uh, interesting question. So the if you look at the distribution of wealth on planet Earth, I think the top 0.1% of wealthy people own 60% of the global wealth on earth. So think about that. Now you may think that Bitcoin has a lot of concentration of wealth at the top of the pyramid, but it's actually nowhere near as bad as the wealth concentration in the rest of the world. And check out if you follow Twitter, um, check out Invest Answers on Twitter. I published my what I call Bitcoin wealth pyramid, which is brand new. I think I stuck it on Reddit as well and a few other places. And that will show you exactly what's happening. The other good thing about the Bitcoin wealth pyramid 
is for the first time ever, retail is getting really smart. We now have about 640, between 640 and 660 new whole coiners in Patreon. They are people that have one Bitcoin. There will never be more than 350,000 people on earth that have one Bitcoin. And our Patreon community has over 600 of those 350,000, which is huge. The goal is get to 1,000. So basically, one in 350 people on earth will be whole coiners within my community. That's my ambitious goal. But we are about 350 whole coiners away. And I know we're going to get there hopefully in the next three or four months. So uh, that that's where I see what's happening. So, But the problem with government fiat is they keep on printing the money. Every time they keep, like they've added 40% of the money supply in the US. So if you have a hundred dollars, you're basically a hundred dollars is now being mashed up with another $40. So that hundred dollars is now worth 100 divided by 140. That's what you have left. And every time they print, your currency is going down in purchasing power. So Bitcoin is the hardest asset on earth and it will only go up. So one Bryden, let me see. Uh, hello, James. I'm a long-term investor, mostly crypto and some stocks. What is the best way to make short-term gains in either crypto or stocks? So the best way and the safest way to make gains and perpetual revenue streams and constant income, the simplest way and the way I started in the early 90s was selling covered calls against stocks. I was buying 10, $20 stocks, really good names that were a little bit volatile, a little bit disruptive, and I'd sell out of the money calls against them every six to eight to 12 weeks. And that way I was making 40%, 30%, 50% like clockwork four times a year on my money. And I kept on doing that, kept on building, and then take all my profits out and buy real estate. Profits out and buy real estate. That is what I did, and uh, it's the safest, it's the easiest. Covered calls are like stealing money from a baby or candy from a baby, whatever that expression is. And that's what I would recommend. Crypto is very risky. It's very disruptive. Um, you know, if you were lucky, like me, and bought a lot of Ethereum last year, 200 bucks, you did well. But sometimes you can't get those type of returns anymore. So, uh, but constant, safe, regular money is the best way for life-changing wealth. And the best way to do that is covered calls. Uh, you don't have to be a sophisticated options trader to do that. Tales from the man cave. Yes, I'm in a little man cave here myself. Uh, Swiss francs, <laughs> very nice. I lived uh, for six years in Zurich. Uh, would you get rid of more aggressive ETFs like ARK at this point? Greets from Switzerland. Super, uh, let me know which city you're in. Um, again, I never own ETFs. I think if I was going to hold any type of asset, it would be the ARK K ETF or the ARK G because they are extremely well run portfolios. Um, so get, I, I would sell other stuff, but I'd hold on to the ARK stuff because they are investing hard in disruption and disruption is where all the money's going to go. And that's where I started my beginning of the presentation today is some stocks are stupidly overvalued. Some stocks, even though they are overvalued, they have such great growth ahead of them, they'll continue to go up. So um, I don't think I'd sell the ARK ETF. You could try trade it, but um, I think the future is good. Unless you're really good at timing, you could ditch your ARK K now and buy it back at the end of August or the middle of August, but then you could incur taxes. So that would be, see what happens. Um, let me see if any other quick questions. Charles Kincannon, thank you so much. I own Galaxy and want to know your thoughts. Yeah, Edward uh, Wikliak, Galaxy has gotten crushed. I would have gone into a huge position on Galaxy yesterday if they had options. They don't have options, at least that I can access through my accounts. And uh, if I could, I would, because what's very special about Galaxy and what Mike Novogratz is doing is he is incubating. I think he has five unicorns. So he has five companies that are worth over a billion dollars each in his stable of Galaxy Digital. And that's a compelling value proposition. Uh, they've been beaten down. I got into Galaxy. I did my first video on Galaxy, which I had Mike Novogratz review the content before I launched it. And right now we are back at the price that I first got in at. So it's basically from March, it went, it tripled 
and it's come right back down again to where it was. So as a solid long-term investment in a retirement account, I think Galaxy Digital is definitely a very good one. Basel, super. Vielen Dank. Ganz nett für dir. Thank you so much. Um, let me see. What else is going on? And I won't keep you guys too long because it's Saturday. Uh, Hen Harry Lime, is it a risk for Bitcoin if people continue to treat it like a currency? This is an interesting one. Uh, and I like this question because, first of all, think of Bitcoin being a pristine store of value. And that's the only way really you can think about it. And if they change it to being a currency, then it'll fall into the same boat as things like fiat currencies. Now, there was an interesting quote from Jerome Powell um, earlier this week, I think it was Wednesday or Thursday, where he said cryptos have failed as currencies and as payment mechanisms. Uh, but that is not true. If you look at what's the work that's being done by Strike and the Lightning Network today, that's all about to change. And you look at the investments by Jack Dorsey. So it's weird. They are building out capabilities within Bitcoin and other cryptos to be true currencies, true payment mechanisms. But I prefer the store of value narrative for now until that technology is established. And then once that happens, if you saw yesterday's video, I was kind of describing my view of the world. The new Cold War, the new World War III, etc. will all be fought, first of all, digitally. And second of all, there's going to be three countries. First one, China with the digital one. Second one, US with the current reserve currency of the world, which is the US dollar. And the third one will be Bitcoin. <laughs> so they're, they're the three players in the new world. And uh, the beauty of Bitcoin is it's so decentralized, nobody can muck with it. So uh, we'll see what happens. Let me see. Uh, Robin Thomas, this timing for the live stream, if possible. You're the best, brother. Thank you so much. So I'll try and mix it up on timings. Um, I know we have a global audience. And I tend to spend a lot of time during the day doing research and then putting it all together and then recording it at night when it's fresh. So like 4 p.m. Pacific, but I'll try and do that. Afadero and cryptos. Have you seen Travella's explosive growth since COVID? Quite a significant increase in revenue. The travel bet is going long term, right? So that's, that's an interesting one. So I thought about plays in some of the travel plays. Um, I originally got into uh, on the post after March, I got into actually an ETF play it was called Jets because I saw the airlines recovering. I looked carefully at things like Airbnb. I saw that being a huge boon because nobody wants to be in a hotel and sharing elevators and common areas. But I thought Airbnb would do really well. Um, but right now, I think we're on the cusp of maybe some more lockdowns and travel restrictions, but it won't be as bad as before. Uh, vaccines do work. They may not be as effective against some of the variants, but um, but I think all of the money has already been made in the travel recovery play for right now. So I would not touch that area. I think the safer places to invest. Um, let me see. I can do options in Galaxy. What would you do? Well, if you're in Canadian dollars, uh, I think it's, what is it? Six, let me check the actual chart right now on Galaxy Live. Um, and this, give me a second. I can't remember what it is in Canadian dollars. Let me pop this up. Uh, so for some reason, uh, <laughs> I was playing with my security on this computer and, uh, anyway, I'd have to look, I don't want to give that answer on options. But buy something that is half time value, half intrinsic value out about a year and a half. So that would take us to, say, January 2023. And if Galaxy is trading at, I think, 16 or 17 Canadian, try buy the $15 calls for about four bucks. Phil H, that would be the answer for you, sir. And that will do well over time. Don't worry. Uh, let me see. Rodney, thank you so much. Um, video that builds a percentage stock and crypto portfolio. Yeah, I do have that in pieces. I share my stock portfolio and my crypto portfolio and percentages. 
but doing a mix of both. Again, Charles Kincannon, what I'm really trying to do is teach people how to build a very efficient portfolio using things like sharp ratios. And when, when hopefully the breakdown happens and the lack of correlation between things like Bitcoin and uh, stocks, equities, happens, then it'll be so much easier to build very, very efficient portfolios. So for example, when crypto is hot, equities are not, and vice versa. And then you can just move money around in between and hedge as a result. And that's when it becomes really powerful. So I used to do that in the past with um, things like oil for a little while and other types of commodities. So uh, cool. I think I'm getting close to wrapping up now. Drink some coffee. But that's Charles, that's a great idea. And uh, I'll think about doing that. I just need a little more data points to be able to make sure that there is that lack of collidation. Jason Price, Teladoc, long-term hold or move into Tesla? Teladoc, definitely a long-term hold. That is a solid, solid name. So lots of spammers in here today. Sorry about that. Um, we do have a moderator uh, killing them, but I'm not sure if she's up to speed on which ones are spammers and which ones are not. And you guys can also report them too. Galaxy Sector, quick, who is at Galaxy Sector? Oh, he's deleted, okay. Let me see, I'm gonna hide them from the channel there. Sorry about Galaxy Sector. Um, and I tried just to scan these things too quickly. Dunder Mifflin mug. Yes, you guys are great eyes. Love it. So very funny TV show. Love from Sweden. Hi, Annika. A change from Binance to, I don't know. So um, I don't know what exchanges are good up there in Sweden. Maybe if somebody else is from Scandinavia, I know that my son is in Denmark and he uses eToro, which is a badly reviewed exchange, but that's what he uses. Um, so if anybody has any good ideas as to what is good for Annika in Sweden, if she wants to move from Binance. Again, if you don't have a lot of money on Binance, uh, you're fine. It's not like they're going to disappear, go out of business. They are the biggest exchange on earth, but there's just a lot of regulatory scrutiny coming down on them all at the same time. And uh, that is a little bit of a problem. So I worry about that a little bit. So let me see if there's one more question I can take. Uh, number one investment is your health. Caligula, so true. Health is wealth. Without health, we are nothing. So coffee is my vice um, with some mushroom in it. KuCoin is the best. Yeah, a lot of people are looking at KuCoin as an exchange. Again, it's kind of and no KYC unregulated thing. So it could actually be banned. Um, FTX is one of my preferred exchanges as well. So try FTX.com and uh, that's it. And we have Mads in Denmark. Yeah, my son is in Copenhagen. We've got people from all over. This is great and uh, cool. I just want to wish everybody a happy Saturday. Tomorrow is Q&A for you all. And a big thank you to everybody. And we will see you tomorrow. Okay. Good night. And thank you also for all the donations. We'll be sponsoring another animal tomorrow. Bye.